Hi, I'm Diane Hendricks and welcome to Fresh to Frozen and Back. This show is going to make your life easier. In each episode, I'll teach you how to prepare delicious and better for you meals, how to freeze them properly, and then bring them back to the table at a later date. This particular episode is about gluten-free. And many Americans just choose to go gluten-free, but it can be confusing, so I'm going to clear up some things for you. The number one thing that I want to share today is substitutions. When you go on a website and it says the top 10 gluten-free dinners of the year and you see chicken, broccoli, and a baked potato, they don't really give you the substitutions for the products that have gluten. So let's do a quick run through and then I'm going to share some amazing dishes that are simple to prepare and absolutely delicious. You won't miss the gluten. So gluten is a protein that's found in wheat, barley, and rye, and it's kind of the glue that holds the product together. And the people that have insensitivities or celiac disease can't have gluten because it aggravates the intestine and it can make you really, really sick. So foods that do contain gluten, we have rye, rye bread, all kinds of breads, um, pasta, wheat pastas, and uh, like udon noodles, whole grain pastas, barley, crackers, you may not think of breadcrumbs and panko and flour, matzah, croutons, crostini little breads, uh, couscous. Those are all sources of gluten. You also want to check the labels to make sure that things are gluten-free if you're strictly following a gluten-free diet because gluten can be hidden. So just be a you know, very cautious consumer. Okay, but over here we have foods that don't contain gluten that are easy and delicious substitutes for those items over there. So anything that's made with rice, we have rice noodles. It's a fabulous substitution for pasta. The rice um, wraps are great. Gluten-free tortillas, you can find them anywhere on the market. This particular brand is called Tufayan. It's a Jersey-based company, that, which is my home state. And I love them. They don't break, they're pliable, they're delicious. Potatoes and sweet potatoes are naturally gluten-free. And then we have oats. Oats are gluten-free. We have uh, rice crackers. And then we have grains like millet and rice and brown rice and uh, grits and cornmeal is gluten-free. Also lentils and beans and nuts and seeds. So that's really great. And then here's just a wild rice, which is actually a grass, and that's naturally gluten-free. And here's some snacks that are gluten-free and absolutely delicious. You've got peanut butter filled pretzels, um, some vegan jerky, some uh, Nature's Bakery fig bars, and the two fine gluten-free pita chips, so you can dip those pita chips in your gluten-free hummus or your guacamole. Okay, now I'm gonna share a few dishes with you and we're gonna start with zucchini rollatini, which is right here. This is what we're going to be making, using zucchini instead of lasagna noodles or rollatini or any type of uh, wheat-based noodle. So we're just gonna boil up some water. And while that water is boiling, I'm gonna make the filling, which is so easy. Okay, so the first thing we have is an egg. Eggs are naturally gluten-free and loaded with nutrition. And we're gonna beat that up a little bit. And this is gonna help bind the ricotta cheese that's inside. We're gonna add some ricotta cheese. The beauty of this is we're gonna use all of it. If you don't use all of it in the filling, it freezes great. So we're gonna mix that in with the, with the egg. Then we're just gonna add a little bit of flavorings. So we've got grated Parmigiano Reggiano, a little bit of basil, you can use dried or fresh, a little oregano, a pinch of cinnamon, my Nana always put a pinch of cinnamon in her ricotta mixture. And then we're just gonna whip that all up. It's got a lot of nice flavor. And because of the cheese, I'm not even gonna add salt right now. Okay, so now that is the, oh, well, you know what, I'm gonna add a little parsley to the inside, but we're gonna top it off with some as well. And that right there, it's almost like the, the filling that I use for lasagna, but we're just gonna roll it up and you'll see how easy it is and it's beautiful as well. So this water's boiling. It's not a rapid boil, but all I'm doing is I'm taking the zucchini, 
which I sliced on a slicer. You could also use a mandolin or you can use a knife. Just try to get even slices. So once the water boils, then you just drop it in. And what I want to do is I just want it to get slightly soft so that when we roll it up, it doesn't break. So let's just uh, wait for this to boil up a little bit and soften up this zucchini. Okay, so now this is done. So I'm going to turn this off. We're gonna take the zucchini out of the water. They're just slightly soft. They're not completely soft, but they're soft enough so they're not gonna break. So you get these nice rolls. So you're gonna use, this is called a spider or a slotted spoon or whatever to take it out. And then I like to lay them on a paper towel just to get a little bit more of the water out. Zucchini has a lot of water. My hands are like asbestos, so I can just pick them up, but you might wanna use a fork or a tong. Okay, so we're gonna just lay these on here. Okay, so now we have the zucchini down here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add the filling. So let me get rid of this fork and we'll use a spoon. So you're just gonna take a very little bit and just put it on the end right here. And then just do that across all of them. You can start on the small end, but they're pretty much even in shape. This is so good. The good thing about this is you only have a little bit of the filling in each one, so you can have a whole bunch of these. I like volume. Okay, so then you're just gonna take it and gently, you're not gonna squeeze it, you're just gonna gently roll it up like this. Now, when I used to make them, I used to lay them in the baking dish like this. But I was playing around one day and I decided to put them in like this. And I just think you can do it either way. Um, if you lay them like this, you don't really see the inside filling. So I just think it looks prettier like that. So you're just, just the key is to be very light with your fingers. So you don't wanna squeeze the inside out. So you're just gonna roll it, be very light, and then set it down. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna nestle them all in together. Now, if you look at, this is just not even a full zucchini. So one zucchini is gonna give me, I've got three more there. Let me roll these up just so you can see how much you get from just one little zucchini. Let's finish them off. So you, you get, I mean, I would say this is more than, I mean, one, you could get two servings out of this or one. Depends how hungry you are. And then again, very gentle with your fingers, very gentle. And then just place it in here. Just like that. Look how easy that is. Boom. You could do this with uh, yellow squash. I'm trying to think of what else you could do it with. You might be able to do it with eggplant as well. So that's all you do. You just kind of line them up and then you stick them in the oven and bake them at 325 for about 20 to 25 minutes covered and then uncover them. And then if you want, you can put some mozzarella cheese on the top and a little bit of sauce, or you can just put the sauce in the bottom of the pan and then just do that like that. And then at the end, when you're done, you just add a little bit of parsley maybe a hit of sauce on top, just for pretty, because I have sauce on the bottom there, and just kind of dollop it around, and it looks so good. And that's it, it's as simple as that. And the beauty of this is it freezes great. So if you only eat a little bit of this, you can just take the rest of them, put them in an airtight container lid, label it, again, date it and label it, stick it in your freezer, and you have another meal when, just like that, as simple as that. When we come back, I'm gonna show you a loaded chicken quesadilla panini made with gluten-free wraps that are amazing. I'll see you in a minute. So a quick gluten-free quesadilla panini. What I like to do is I'll spray a pan that's heating up with a little bit of healthy spray. This is coconut oil or an avocado oil or something like that. Get it hot. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this tortilla. You can do this with uh, gluten-filled tortillas or gluten-free, and then just put it in the pan. Get a little bit of the oil on that side, because we're gonna flip it back over. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it over, and while the other side's heating up, we're just gonna load it up. That's what it is, it's a loaded tortilla. First thing is cheese. If you're using cheese, put the cheese on the bottom, because then everything kind of melts into it. So you're gonna put the cheese across the entire tortilla, as much or as little as you like. This is a Mexican blend of cheeses. I think there's a little Monterey Jack, a little bit of cheddar. So good, okay. 
Then I'm going to put the chicken on. And I have grilled chicken. You can use a rotisserie chicken, anything. If you don't want chicken, you can use any type of protein that you like, beans, just plain beans for vegetarian. And I'm gonna just put these on the one side. Let me turn this down, this oven gets hot. This stove gets hot, hot. Okay, so we've got that. And then we are going to add some cilantro. And we are going to put some guacamole on it. Cross, it would just kind of spread it. And then we've got a combination of peppers, mushrooms, and onions. That's just the combination that I like. But if you like something else, do it. There's no rules. Okay, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the tortilla and pull it back and fold it in half. My little trick, wrap a brick in aluminum foil. It's a great way to weigh down and make a panini or any, you can do a full chicken with two bricks in a big pan. You can do potatoes and get them nice and crispy on the bottom. And we're gonna let that cook for just a minute and get nice and, it'll get crispy on the bottom because if you noticed as we were doing this, the underside was already cooking. So that's enough now and then I'm gonna flip it over. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this over. If there's anything sticking out, I just kinda shove it back in. It's okay, if it comes out in the pan and it doesn't stay in the sandwich, I just use a fork and I'll eat it. And then I'm just gonna lay the brick on top. And if I want it to be really flat, I'll double brick it. And it's just such a great tool. So literally you can go to like a garden store, buy a brick, and I just keep rewrapping it. I mean, I keep it for, I don't know, two, three uses, and then I rewrap it again with fresh aluminum foil. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that off and let that sit. And then when it's done, we're gonna plate it up and put a little bit of sour cream on the side. Over here, we have different types of tortillas. Right here I have, this is a breakfast tortilla. This has eggs and spinach and sun-dried tomatoes and a little cheese in it. This is buffalo chicken with blue cheese. And then this one, which I really love, this is eggplant parmesan without any breadcrumbs. So it's just eggplant with a little bit of cheese and a little bit of tomato sauce and a gluten-free sun-dried tomato tortilla. So this one's ready. This is all you do, Think. Then you just cut it and it just looks so beautiful. I like to cut these tortillas into three. So I'm just gonna cut it here and then I'll cut it here. I can even feel the resistance on my knife because it's nice and crispy. And look at that, look how delicious that looks. So you just plate it up and this looks like a lot of food. So once it's smashed down and look at all that, how delicious is that? So you have a loaded chicken quesadilla tortilla panini that is gluten-free and it's absolutely delicious. When we come back, I'm going to show you my mashed potato pizza pancakes. You'll feel like you're eating pizza, but you're gluten-free with mashed potatoes. I'll see you in a minute. Mashed potato pizza pancakes. Super simple and absolutely delicious. You can make anything you want as an addition to these mashed potatoes. If you don't want pizza, you can do anything. You can do beans, you can do anything that you like. But I'm doing this pizza one because I love it and my kids absolutely love it because they love mashed potatoes. Who doesn't love mashed potatoes? So this is just plain old mashed potatoes. To it, I'm going to be adding some fresh basil that's been chopped. A good amount because you want that flavor in there. Some crushed red pepper flakes. It's a little subtle hint, but really good. We're gonna take a little tiny bit of salt and I'm going to add some flour. And obviously I can't use wheat flour or rye flour. So what I'm using here is cassava flour, but you can also use almond flour or coconut flour. And this is just a little bit that's going to bind it. Then we're gonna add a little bit of fresh mozzarella cheese and just stir this all up. And at the end, we're gonna put a little bit of uh, sour cream on the side and a little marinara sauce together. So good, you could use ricotta instead of the sour cream, but it goes really nice together. Okay, so we have this little pan here and I'm gonna heat up a little bit of olive oil. We've got an extra virgin olive oil here. Pompeii, very good. Get it nice and hot. And I like to kind of mush it around a little bit. You can make these as little one bite appetizers or make them as large or small as you like. 
So I'm gonna make a couple of little ones just so you can see it, and they're never gonna be perfect. You know, I like things a little bit messy. It's a little more natural. And then just smash them down with your finger and your spoon. Then I'll just do one more. They're so good. Now this pan's a little lopsided and I can tell that the oil is going to one side. Come on, tell me you have never experienced that. If you do, you just keep shifting your pan around so that the oil disperses differently. And you'll see that it goes to the other side. So you're just gonna let that cook up a little bit because you want it brown on one side. You want it nice and crispy. And actually, my son told me this. I made them for him the other day and he wanted them not so thick. So if you want them thinner, all you do is push down a little bit. Lucas? Thank you, because I just thought of that. He was like, I love these, Mom, but I think I'd like them a little bit thinner. So that's fine. So that's what we're going to do. And then just check it here and there. Oh, the olive oil smells so good. And we're just going to let that cook up a little bit. And that flour is going to help to kind of bind it together. It's really good. These are actually finished. So this is a finished version. Let me bring this over here. These are our finished version. They're so good. So let's flip this one over, see what we got here. See, it's a little bit brown. You can make it as brown as you'd like, but they stay together very, very nicely. And they're so good. And this guy's got a little... There. So we're gonna let that cook up, and then once it's done, you just plate it. It's as simple as that. So here's the finished version. They freeze great. You take them individually on a baking sheet, put the entire baking sheet in the freezer until they get rock solid. Once they're rock solid, you just take them out and just throw them in a Ziploc bag, a freezer safe Ziploc bag, label it, date it, and you can pull them up one, two at a time and they're absolutely fabulous. So once they're done, you just plate it and then what we're gonna take is a little bit of sauce across the top if you'd like, just a little bit. And then a little bit of fresh Parmesan cheese or Pecorino Romano, whatever you like and then a little bit more fresh basil, or you can use parsley or whatever you like. These are so good. I'm actually gonna have to have one. All right, so let me take these off. And you can see how nice they look. And what I would do is take these and put these on a paper towel lined plate or baking sheet. Get a little bit of the oil out. So good. Oh my gosh, they're so good. And as they cool, they firm up and let that one cook. So the, what you do, you'll see that the oil came from the bottom and now that's all on the paper towel. So you're not gonna be having all that extra excess oil. And that's it, you just plate it up. Again, you freeze it and this is the final version and it is so good. Let me try it. These are actually good cold, believe it or not. These aren't cold, but they are good cold. So good. Mm. It literally tastes like pizza with no uh, wheat flour and no gluten in it, but it's so good and it's great for kids. Actually, it's a great lunch to send your kids. They can pick them up and eat them. Okay, let's get rid of that. Now, I want to show you some other dishes that I've made. You can also make gluten-free banana bread. This is so good and it's so simple. I used uh, coconut flour in here and um, I actually did a taste test with my kids and they liked the gluten-free one better, believe it or not. Look at this. It's moist, it's delicious. You can add nuts to it if you like, and it's very easy. What we always do in our family is we pop these in the toaster and then we put a little cream cheese on them. That's the way my mother always used to like to have banana bread. Here we have rice noodles with shrimp scampi. You would not even notice the difference you get with the rice noodles, you get that nice stringiness, just like, you know, pasta, just like wheat pasta. And it actually is, I prefer it. It's delicious. And what else do we have? Oh, this is for breakfast. We have a quinoa breakfast parfait, which has some cooked quinoa on the bottom, which I added a little bit of cinnamon, a little vanilla extract, and a little bit of honey to the quinoa. Stirred it all up. And then I have some plain Greek yogurt that again, I put a little vanilla extract and a tiny bit of honey in, and then just some fresh berries on top. And it's an easy grab and go, um, gluten-free takeaway breakfast. Tune in next time to Fresh to Frozen and Back. I'm Diane Hendricks. If you like this episode, please share it with your friends and your family and the people that you love. And I'll see you next time.